For new vegans, the first priority should always be eliminating meat, dairy and eggs. But once you've changed your eating habits, it's important to ensure that the other everyday products you use are ethical too. It is not always practical or financially possible to replace every non-vegan product immediately. And since the damage is already done when the products are purchased, it's okay to use up existing products. However, after they're gone, you have a responsibility to buy vegan alternatives. Fortunately, there are plenty of vegan cosmetics available. If you find ethical companies, they will clearly label their products as vegan. But there are plenty of vegan products which aren't labelled. Cruelty-free is a misleading term which means a product has not been tested on animals, but it can still contain cruel animal-derived ingredients. There are really only three logos you should trust when looking for non-animal tested cosmetics. Any other symbol or logo of a bunny is unofficial and shouldn't be trusted without further research. But because companies have to pay an extra fee to display these logos on their packaging, some certified products might not display the logos, so you can check on their databases if you think this might be the case. Phrases like, this product has not been tested on animals, we fund research into alternatives, often still means that the ingredients were tested, just not on the final product, so they are not cruelty free. And many cosmetics have a number of different ingredients which will be unfamiliar to most people. Most of them are synthetic, but look out for the following animal derived ingredients. Ambergris, beeswax, which is also called Sarah Alba and is very common. Carmine, which is a common red dye also known as red 5 cochineal cominic acid and casein, caseinate, and sodium caseinate, cholesterol, collagen, estrogen or estradiol, keratin, lanolin, lecithin, glycerides, monoglycerides, musk, oleic acid, placenta, polypeptides, polysorbates, progesterone, and retinol. And lactic acid and glycerin or glycerol can both be derived from animals, but companies have started to use plant sources, so you might need to contact the company if you're unsure. Just understand that it's okay to make mistakes, as long as you always strive to learn more and do the best you can to be as ethical as possible. And keep in mind that phrases like all natural can be applied to almost all of these disgusting animal derived ingredients, so don't let this mislead you. There are hundreds of companies which sell all kinds of vegan cosmetics at varying prices. Some of them can only be found online, but there are plenty of high street products available too. It's impossible to link to every company in every country, but in the ebook which is attached below, I've included the most useful and comprehensive lists, guides, and videos. The Cruelty Free International Guide, as well as Peter's Guide and the Choose Cruelty Free Guide, are a good place to start. And if you simply type your country with the phrase vegan cosmetics into Google or YouTube, you will find the most relevant information on products you can buy. Checking online vegan guides, as well as company websites and ingredients lists, is a good way to find out which products are vegan. But if you're still unsure about something, make sure you email the company. You'll need to ask, does the product contain animal derived ingredients? Do you test on animals at any point during the production of your products? Are the ingredients tested on animals by your supplier? Does any third party test on animals on your behalf? And it's also a good idea to ask the company for a list of vegan products. To save time, I've attached a template that you can paste into emails below, so make use of that. Emails and social media inquiries help influence companies, so by doing this they will be encouraged to clarify their labelling and even change their ingredients and animal testing policies. Recently there has been a ban on animal testing in Europe and in some other areas like Israel, India and New Zealand. On the surface this has meant that companies cannot sell products or ingredients tested on animals in these countries. However, this does not mean that we should be complacent about the cosmetics we use. The bans just apply to ingredients which are only used in cosmetics and it only covers consumer safety tests, meaning that they can still test ingredients on animals to determine if there's a risk for the environment or worker safety. And unethical international companies can still test products and ingredients in other parts of the world. And keep in mind that regardless of the ban, companies still use animal-derived ingredients in many of their products. The ban also doesn't cover household products, so you will still need to find vegan alternatives for those. And because the chemicals in cosmetics can be harmful for the body, some vegans choose to simplify their cosmetics use and use cheaper, less processed alternatives. Things like coconut oil and shea butter are great as a moisturiser or hair conditioner, and you can even make homemade lip balms with them as well. And there are tons of recipes for things like homemade deodorants and face masks.
This might seem overwhelming, but remember that changing habits often seems a lot more challenging than it actually is. The initial switch from non-vegan to vegan cosmetics does require some extra time and effort for a short period, but once you've found and tested out new vegan products, you won't need to think about it. For more information about animal testing as well as a complete beginner's guide to vegan cosmetics, check out the free ebook link below. I also have complete guides to vegan food and vegan clothing, so make use of those too. If you want to help support the production of helpful guides like this one, please help support my activism via Patreon.